Good morning. Good morning. Uh, do you mind? Can you can you turn just slightly so the jury can can see us? Perfect. Thank you. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself to the jury, please. Um, I'm Janae Edmondson. Okay. How old are you? I'm 18. Um, I want to talk to you about February 18th of last year. Um, do you recall why you were in St. Louis? Yes, I wow. was in there. I was there for a volleyball tournament. All right. And um, do you know or remember about when your <coughs> last game wrapped up? I don't remember what time. Okay, was it evening? Yes. All right. And uh, were you with your parents? Yes, I was. What were your plans after the, the last game concluded? Um, to go back to the hotel and get some food. Like pizza, something like that. Okay, that's what you wanted, right? Yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> so, uh, and how are you going to get to the hotel? Oh, uh, we were going to drive back. Okay. So, um, as you were walking to get to your car, um, do you remember a traumatic incident occurring? Yes. I okay. Do. Can you describe, in your own words, for the jury? Um, were you standing on a curb? Yes, I was. All right. Can you describe for the jury in your own words what you remember happening that moment? Um, I remember because we were right across the street from our car, and we were about to walk like cross the street when I was looking before I crossed, and I saw a car coming, and it was going really fast, so I told my dad to watch out. And so we backed up, and then I was still watching it as it was coming. And um, we were about to proceed, and then after that, I, was, I grabbed my dad and I said, oh, watch out, and we turned and ran. And then after that, I felt something hit me, and it was warm. And then after that, I ended up on my stomach, face down, and I was screaming because I couldn't feel my body. And I was just in pain. Okay. And I was screaming because I, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what. And so I tried to stand up, but my dad and my mom said no. So to sit, to stay still, and so here's some here's some tissue for you there, Janae. Okay, if you need to pause for a second, that's just fine. Okay. And so my mom came and was holding my face. She was saying, don't close your eyes, stay awake, don't, don't go, like, don't close my eyes at all. And so I felt my dad screaming, and, well, I heard my dad screaming, and he was tying up uh, something real, really tight around my legs. I didn't know what it was, but he was pulling, and I was like, and I was thinking to myself, like, why? Like, what's wrong? Why is this t so tight around my legs? And so I eventually stopped screaming. And I was just sitting there, uh, face down, like on the concrete. And my mom eventually got up and walked around. And I was just laying there thinking to myself, like, what's going on? And then. <laughs> What happened after your mom came around? Um, she was just holding my face. Like after she left from holding my face? No, no, when she walked around and was holding your face. Do you recall her saying anything to you? Yeah, just keep, uh, keep, keep your eyes open. Don't close them. Um, so were you aware of any of the sounds or anything like that while you were, your mom was holding your face? Mm -mm. I just heard my, like, uh, just people around me talking and yelling. I didn't like really know what they were saying. I just heard noise and people talking. Okay. What's the 
next thing that you remember? Um, I remember going into the ambulance and I was sitting there and I had three people on the right side of me and two on the left. And I was talking to them saying, my mom said, don't close my eyes, I have to stay awake. And so I was just sitting, sitting there looking up, like repeating that to myself. And then when... Did you remember it, Janae? Did you keep your eyes open? Yes, I did. I remember getting to the hospital, and I was laying there, and there was a bunch of doctors around me, just sitting around me. And I was thinking to myself, like, why are they not doing something? And they were just sitting there, and I remember talking to them and saying, my mom said I have to keep my eyes open. And then I eventually remember my mom and dad coming, and they were like up at the top near my head. And after that, I closed my eyes and I don't remember anything else. Okay. Um, what's the next thing you remember happening? Um, when I sat up for the first time in the hospital, because I was always laying on my back, because I had these um, metal rods sticking out on my pelvis. And so I was, yeah, the first time that I sat up was the last thing I remember from the um, being in the hospital. Okay, so um, you had metal rods in your pelvis? Yes. Okay, um, how did that feel? It, it was painful, I couldn't move, I was stuck in one position. to move and sitting up for the first time, it was, I felt relieved because I couldn't feel my body at all, like my back, my hips or anything. I couldn't feel anything. And then when I sat up for the first time, it took like the pain off of my pelvis and my hips. Um, do you remember, were, were your parents there when you did that? Yes. Do you remember the first time you were able to talk to your mom or your dad after no, your I surgery? Don't. No. Okay. <coughs> What's the next thing you remember about being in the hospital? Um, really just, um, getting out of the hospital bed and moving to a chair or a wheelchair and going up and down the halls in the hospital. Was that pretty much the extent of the time you were able to leave your hospital room? Yes. They had this area in the hospital that was, um, that had windows that was looking out uh, into the city. And so we went out there from time to time so I could get a different like sense of the scenery and everything instead of being trapped in the hospital room. All right. Is that hard for you to just, the only activity you have is to get in your wheelchair and go down the halls? Yeah, I started to get depressed a lot because I was questioning why this, has, this had happened to me. And then it's just, I'm a very active person, and so being trapped or feeling trapped and not being able to go out and like even just go outside and sit outside, I just <coughs> became depressed. Um, before this happened to you, um, what was your social life like? I would go out with friends all the time, going to Sonic, hanging out, going to basketball games, playing in basketball games and volleyball games and just going to see other teammates that
that I had known in my um, county. So going to other people's volleyball games or basketball games. So can you talk about the healing process? And most importantly, I'd like you to describe for the jury um, what your pain levels were like um, because of this injury. It was, it was just awful. I was had stabbing pain all throughout my legs. I was numb majority of the time that I was in the hospital and even coming out and even now my legs are still numb in places and I can't feel hardly anything but it was stabbing pain all through like down my back into my hips and my legs and it's just I just couldn't deal with it anymore and it's just got to the point where I was like just tired of it and I just felt helpless because I couldn't do anything except for deal with it. having any kinds of um, sensations? I think uh, phantom pain? Yes, I had. C can you describe for the jury what that is? Yeah, so um, it was feelings of I could like feel my toes or even like feel the rest of my leg and like getting a, like an, when you have an itch on the bottom of your foot, I had feelings like that and it was just, feelings like I could move my toes. So I had that a lot and it, like, cause I have nothing anymore. It's just cupping helped with that and like to retrain my, uh, my brain to say like, my leg stops here and that I don't have a foot or anything anymore. When you have those phantom pains in your toes or your legs, psychologically, what did that do to you? It's hard to explain, but it's just something I just had to come to terms with, cause it's like I I couldn't fix it, so I was, it's just hard. Okay. It's just hard to explain. All right, and at some point, um, would you do the? Um, it was holding and cupping that that therapy were you doing that to yourself I was but some it at, at times it got to the point where it just hurt so bad I couldn't do nothing except for like cry and scream and so my parents had to come and do it and my dad was on one leg and my mom was on the other All right. um, as part of your recovery um, do you remember the wound care that had to be done every day? Yes, so we took these yellow sheets of zero form and Vaseline and saline, and we would have to put it over my, my, the bottom of my leg, the skin graft sites, and we just coated it all in Vaseline, which helped me heal. And then we would take um, the, um, I, I, I don't know the name for it, Okay. But it's the bandages that I put around, like over it. And so we wrapped it in a figure eight to help with the swelling so it didn't swell. Okay, and you had to do that every day? Every day. Um, and then before you could put the new material on, did you have to take the old off? Yes. Can you describe what that was like? Um, so I had a new skin that would heal over it. But every time I took it off, it would rip the new like skin off, and so it was just a constant open wound, and it was it hurt a lot, mainly on the tops of my legs. And so ripping that new skin off, it just kept reopening it, and it eventually healed, but it took a while for it to heal. Um, as part of your multiple surgeries, did you have staples? inside your legs? I don't think they were staples, it was stitches, but we had to take those out because my body rejected some of them. And so that was even painful because we had to put lidocaine on it that helped numb it. But most of the time it never really worked. And so 
I eventually got to the point where I had to do it myself and take the stitches out because the wound care um, person that did it, they never understood like my pain tolerance or like when something hurt. So I eventually had to do it myself. Okay. Um, as far as your, you, you still have more surgeries ahead of you, is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. Um, and can you tell the jury about your physical therapy from um, the first time you started getting physical therapy until now? So my first time was in Vanderbilt when we life flighted from St. Louis to Vanderbilt back home. And the, I don't remember my very first time going, but it was mainly like me trying to like be able to bend my knee and get that back because I was in a brace that kept my legs straight all the time. And so that was what we did in the hospital. And then eventually I went to the rehab center and they were teach like they had workouts for like uh, to like transfer from seat to seat in different places and we did a lot of that and then um, being able to like pop up on different like surfaces in my wheelchair taught me that then I eventually started physical therapy um, back home and that's me using my prosthetics I would do uh, therapy there in my prosthetics, walking, um, just relearning the balance and everything. Okay. Um, I want to, and your, your physical therapy is ongoing, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. it is. And there's no definite stopping point mm -hmm. of when you'll end no. that or if it will continue for years in yeah. the future, right? Right. Okay. Um, before we get to your prosthetics, I wanted to talk to you about, um, do you remember the first time you saw your sister and I believe was it your brother? Yes. Okay, can you describe that? So they came and visit me in St. Louis. They drove down and I remember when they first walked in, they just walked in and stared at me because they didn't know what to say to me. And so, I, I'm not the type of person to show like my emotion because I want to protect my family. And so, when they first walked in, they just stared, didn't know what to say. And so I made a joke to make it easier on them. And after that, they just started talking to me like normal before, like how we normally would be. Do you remember what your joke was? Yes, it was. <laughs> hey, I have no legs. That's what I said to them. Like in a surprise tone? Yeah, yeah, and I raised my leg up to show them the right leg. Okay. Did that break the ice a little bit? Yes, it did. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about, um, since you, you were, you've been home, you graduated from high school, right? Yes. Uh, and can you tell us, um, you were in National Honor Society, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and you graduated with your class. Yes. Uh, and then after graduation, um, what did you do over the summer, if anything? Um, I celebrated my birthday, but I had a, another surgery on my birthday. And just mainly over the summer, we did a lot of physical therapy and really focused on that. And then in July, I started back with uh, the volleyball team that I'm a part of at MTSU. And I helped with the camps that they held for the high school and middle school volleyball teams. And so I did that over the summer. Okay. And um, 
I understand that you had a scholarship, a college scholarship uh, that, that you'd, you'd been given. Yes. Um, did you go to that school? To uh, UT Southern? Yes. I went for a visit. I don't remember when, but it was before my tournament here that I went to. And I had just committed to play volleyball there. Um, I think it was Thursday is when I committed. And yeah, we, we went on a visit to the school and I practiced with the team, looked at the campus and everything. So yeah. Okay. Um, and are you enrolled in college now? Yes. Where are you enrolled in college? Middle Tennessee State University. Okay, so that's different than the first scholarship that you got? Yes. Okay, and why did you end up uh, going to the other school? To MTSU? Yes. Because of my accident, not my accident, the, the, um, the crash? Yeah, the crash that happened. Um, UTS was an hour away and I still had surgeries and doctor's appointments I still had to go to. And so we found um, a closer college that's 20 minutes away, which is MTSU. Okay. Um, are you engaged in any activities there? Yes, I'm a part of the volleyball team. Okay, what, what's your role? I'm a manager. Okay, all right. I'm gonna show you few photographs. Oh, well, let me ask you this. Um, before um, the, the crash, uh, were you driving? In My other words, not at that moment, but did you have a driver's yes, license? Yes, yes I did. Okay. Yes. Um, and since then, um, do you have a special car? Yes. Can, can you talk about the accommodations of the car that you have now? Yes, so I had to get a new car because my old car didn't have electric seats seats because I can't like pull the seat up to adjust it. And so I got a new car that's electric seats and they had to put hand controls in to even work the car because even though I have my knee on the, the right side, I don't have the same sensation like in my ankle and my foot to even work the pedals. So I had to go to a driving course again for, uh, and it took two times where I had to do all these tests and learn how to use the hand controls on the road and everything. And so I had to take that and then go drive again and get a new license to be able to drive. And so. So are you able to drive now? Yes, I am. All right, and you have a valid driver's license? Yes. yes. With, for the accommodations that yes. you've got now, right? Yes. Okay, I just wanna show you a few pictures, okay? Saturday night. Okay, the Saturday night of the crash? Yes. Okay, um, who could make it? This is what it was. Who could do it? Uh, All right, so Stephanie, we have it anyway, Pablo. Football team. And so I set up the offense and everything like that, and I'm the one that feeds the hitters the ball. Um, yes. How long? The, 
that and that was at Vanderbilt is when I seen him. Yes, so at first it was him sitting at the end of the bed and I could look at him and I could feel like I'm rubbing my feet against his fur. So I had that type of feeling. And then eventually it got to the point where I could like anticipate him coming up to me and see him just walking across the bed and my legs would start tingling uncomfortably and it was just an uncomfortable feeling or even if he like licked me or like sniffed me it would tickle which made my whole legs start tingling uncomfortably. Yes. The left leg went uh, during the room care change. This is me at the rehab center when I was uh, had a physical therapy like time that I was doing there. What are you doing there? Um, we're on the BOSU ball working on my balance. Um, an ab workout with the ball okay. during physical therapy. Yeah. And do you know what the ab workout is, is targeting or helping you with? Um, my core so I could balance myself while standing. Okay. So you're supposed to get 176. These are tricep dips for my arms to help me transfer over from seats okay. and different chairs. And these orange wheels that you see, are, is that your wheelchair? Yes, that was the wheelchair that they gave me during the um, rehab center. So you're training to be able to get yourself in and out of the chair? Yes. Uh, me doing pull-ups. Okay. And that is strengthening again? My arms to help me transfer over. Stage exhibit 178. Do you know what you're doing there? I was proud. Mm -mm. Okay. No. Another. Yeah, another workout. It was probably my um, leg lifts to strengthen my glutes and my hips. Yes, because we have stairs in our house, and that's where my room is, is upstairs. And so we were figuring out a way for me to push up on each step to get up stairs if I ever wanted to go up to my room.
the consequences of the actions. Somebody else. <coughs> You're not stopping, are you? You're forging ahead. Yes. And your goal is to be the best you can be. Yes. Right? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you.